This is our final segment of Ms. World Traveler from Rome, and we can't sign off before talking about the significance of religious art in Italy. Not surprisingly, there are a lot of churches in Rome. It seems no matter how big, like the largest basilica in the world, St. Peter's, or how small, there are beautiful and elaborate paintings adorning the walls and the ceilings, a veritable museum in each one, only with free entry. Romans are also known for decorating the floor with mosaics. From as early as 500 BC, artists used small cubes of stone, glass, shells, and ceramic to create intricate designs detailing everyday life and activities. For the past two centuries, mosaics have been the Cassio family business, starting with the restoration of archeological sites, monuments, churches, museums, and fountains, and now teaching the traditional craft in classes. Um, so Juliana, your family has been in yeah. the business of mosaics for a couple hundred years. Well, to be honest, I married him then. You did. Oh, look at you. <laughs> but uh, this family, this is a Cassio, Cassio's family, they have been working uh, mosaic for over, yeah, for over 100 years because uh, mm -hmm. Lorenzo Cassio, he directed the Vatican Mosaic Studio for over 40 years. Oh my. And he That's had, how it started. Yeah. And he had eight children, and mm. every child every day had to make a small mosaic. Okay. Every day, starting from the age of eight. Mm. So well, that's how you learn it, right? When you start uh, young, <laughs> my husband learned it like this. And uh, well, the studio was found, uh, founded by one of them, by Fabrizio Castro, and thousands and thousands of square meters of mosaics passed through the studio, especially because um, he invented a lot of techniques about restoration of ancient mosaic. Mm -hmm. That is why we restored uh, a lot of mosaics from National Museum of Rome, Archaeological Museum of Naples, uh, Herculino, Herculinium, uh, Tivoli, a lot, Pompeii, a lot. A so lot what, what goes into a restoration? What things do you have to look for and, and make sure that you get exactly like it was? Well, yeah, it's interesting because now we think about restoration, how to preserve what we have, how we don't want to rebuild it. For mm -hmm. example, you have a Colosseum mm -hmm. and you have a missing part, we have a missing part, but we can't, we know how it was, but we can't rebuild it because uh, because it will not be original we have to preserve what we have so that the same for mosaic uh -huh. so for example these mosaics we restore it for Pompeii in fact you can find it and we have the missing parts and we can't uh, we can't invent we have to save what we have so if we can still find a piece of mosaic, we have to save it. Okay, so the restoration then is not adding more pieces and not finishing the picture. It's making sure whatever is there exactly. stays there. Exactly. Ah, okay. To be able to do it, sometimes we have to detach it completely, make a new base and replace it at the same place. Okay. Oh, that's very interesting. So how did the idea then for a studio where you're teaching other mm -hmm. people to it. How did that come about? Well, um, I must say that now we don't restore anymore, anymore like in the past because uh, now we are more focused about to make mosaics. We have different collaborations with artists and uh, um, the idea to preserve this art because if you don't know how, how it was made, you don't know how to repair it as well. Right, right. So you're, you almost teach both at the same time. Exactly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> well, tell me what you have here, well, because these pieces just, are just beautiful. Ah, uh, it's just our. We try to promote to promote local art. That is why these um, 
these are images from the Villa Livia that you can find in National Museum of Rome and all mosaics from Villa Livia uh, was restored by this studio but this in original it was fresco fresco oh, okay. turned into mosaic but okay. it's just an amazing garden when you get there you it's incredible. Uh -huh. just You're just incredible. overwhelmed exactly. by the beauty of it. Yeah. These look very different from like this one that is behind me here. Right. Um, that is very typical Roman mosaic looking. So, so help me understand then what the difference is. Why can we look at that and say that is a Roman mosaic and look at this and say it's a mosaic, but I don't know if it's a Roman one. Okay, well, interesting because, good question, because actually uh, we have, in Italy we have uh, different mosaic styles, like we have uh, ancient Roman mosaic, and when we think about Roman, uh, ancient, in our mind, it's not like medieval, it's not like 15th century, but it's 2000 years old. Okay. And uh, we have a school of Roman mosaic based on uh, typical local techniques, ancient mosaic. So all pieces are perfectly square and, uh, uh, and we have a really strict rules. It's easier to learn Roman mosaic because it's more like simple to understand. Okay. And this is a Vatican mosaic. This is original piece of the Vatican mosaic mm -hmm. because uh, the first, this family was part of the Vatican. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, and we have, as you can see, a lot of colors. It's completely different material because they made their own colors in the Vatican. Uh -huh. So this is a sample, we call it pizza. Pizza? Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> okay. That we should cook. Oh, you put it like pizza on glass. <laughs> it's not pizza. Like. Okay. And this is here, you can still read the Reverenda Fabrica San Pietro. Mm -hmm. The coat of arm ah. on the pop. Reverenda Fabrica San Pietro. This is a very, very special glass because uh, it's one color, one recipe. But try okay. to guess how many colors did they make. Ooh, 17. <laughs> 17 uh, what? what? <laughs> 1700? No, more. 17,000. More? <laughs> Not a little bit more. More than wow. 24,000 dollars. Wow. That's incredible wow. because they had a. Mm, thousands, thousands right. of red salt. Well, if you're going to make blue. all kinds of shadings, you would have to have. Right, not just one red, you'd have to have many, many, many reds to, to make the shadings right. properly, right? But to give it dimension. <laughs> but right? now we have only 400 colors. What happened? You're, 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 you're slowing down on the job. <laughs> <laughs> they stopped producing it for over uh -huh. 200 years ago oh, really? because they okay. made it to be able to make the like 10,000 square meters uh, of the mosaic in the Vatican for St. Okay. Pietro Basilica. Okay. And but you're not making 10,000 meters anymore. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So what is this? You brought out um, another sample here. Is this yeah, um, one of the examples of stone? Yeah, you? just to show you that ancient mosaics were very, very thick. It's very durable uh -huh. art. Okay. Because we have a, we have a, like tiny pieces uh, here on the top, but it was it like it. Ah, like it's, it's, yes. Yeah. Well, and then did so they it into cement? Is that what they use? It's the, a kind of cement. You can do, it's based on white because of the calcium. It's like a kind of lime. Ah, but they okay. employ different recipes because we speak about a mm. pretty long story. Mm -hmm. So the pieces were not uh, tiny squares. They were tiny on top, exactly. but long exactly. on the bottom. Especially for floors. Yes. Well, maybe that's why they've lasted so long. Exactly. They were so exactly. well built to begin with, right? Right, <laughs> right. For example, this is a typical archaeological site where we don't have walls anymore, but we have, we still have a mosaic. Oh, we have floors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because of the structure, because it mm. holds together not only the, not only because of the glue, but because of the structure as well. Yes. That's what we try to teach. Mm. Our so, is there anything in between all of these pieces? Is there some kind of a mortar okay. or something? Well, uh, good question as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so good today. 
music is well done and if it is a warm music we don't it don't we don't need any grout oh, we okay. put we grout it only for floors for out Door mosaics, uh, but if it is, we like um, to play with the distance between between pieces because because when you think uh, we create a drawing um, not with the pieces but with the space between pieces. Ah, yeah. Okay, so, so the negative space, space is important. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is just beautiful. Thank you for inviting <laughs> Thank us you. in. And, and we're appreciating that you are, again, teaching right. uh, the public, trying to pass on mm -hmm. this the skills, right, yeah. so that it's not forgotten. That's part of your mission here, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Fundamental to the mission of Studio Casio is to innovate and pass on their experience to the public so that the secrets of the Roman mosaic craft do not disappear. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. Eat pizza, of pasta and panini, perfect the art of the stroll, and shop for Italian artisan-made fashion art and accessories. Lose yourself ambling down the little side streets to find those interesting holes in the wall that seem to go on and on. The saying must be true, but a lifetime is not enough. I'm Ms. World Traveler Carrie Damiano, reminding you to travel safe, shop smart, dress well, and be grateful for every day.